This is how we do makeup, ladies. Come on, blend it down. It helps pull it. It helps let it blend. Just rotate. Let it fall down, just like that. And this is not our completed tree shape, right? But we dab up, be very bright the first time you do that. So be careful. Hi, welcome back to Paint With Josh. Today we did a gorgeous 16 by 20 inch ice cold freezing January painting. Woo, it's cold in here. You're obviously excited about this one. That's why you clicked on the link. You wanna learn how to paint it. So check the description down below. Make sure you find all the colors you need. Make sure you get your canvas nice and wet. Get ready to throw some paint on. We're gonna do it just like this. Hey guys, welcome back. It's Paint With Josh back in the studio, back with you, hanging out. And today we're gonna do a cold blue scene. Uh, it's it's January, it's nice and cold. So we're just gonna stick with blue, black, and white. Gonna try not to use any other color on the palette here. I always have paint on the palette. So no matter what we're doing, Josh always has something on the palette, right? Now we've taken the canvas and we've covered it in our Bob Ross liquid white oil paint. Just a little bit though, it took a little bit, stretched it all the way. We have our phthalo blue, uh, midnight black, and titanium white. We probably actually need to get a little bit more titanium white out of the box. And today we're using Winsor & Newton titanium white, almost out. So need to get a little bit more of that. Now I'm gonna take our, I'm gonna grab a one inch brush, just like this, nice clean dry one inch brush. We're gonna go into the phthalo blue. Since we're only gonna use these three colors today, phthalo blue is all we got, right? Now, we're gonna take our very expensive technical piece of equipment, our Solo Cup. It's used mainly for sunsets, but now it's kind of turning a little bit blue around the edge, you can see. So, we're gonna take this guy, I don't know, let's say our light area is somewhere back here. I'm gonna take the brush and come up here, just dump a little bit around the side, who knows? Maybe there was another little piece over here too that was a little bit wider. I don't know, you just play with it, right? Let's try it over here, I've never done this before, but we're gonna try it over here too. And just like that, we're gonna have some little light areas. Looks like Mickey Mouse in the sky, right? You guys are like, why do I watch this guy? He's like a four year old, what are we doing? Now, I really don't want all the color on the brush, so I'm gonna drop a little bit of it up here, maybe a little bit more down in here, and you can see it's getting lighter and lighter with that liquid white. It's even turning a lighter color on the brush. And that's because it's constantly blending with all of this white paint that we have. That's the on wet part of wet on wet, right? Now I'm gonna take this very lightly, pull it in just like that. And we'll start over here just so lightly because I wanna leave the area inside white, right? Or at least as white as we can get it. So just kind of dabbing it around, bringing it up. This guy will come in, it's very thick up here. So I don't really wanna push very hard. If we're pushing very hard, then uh, it's gonna drag in real far and that may not be what we want. There goes my mall stick falling all over the place during the live show, of course it would. See, very light pressure. Ooh, very, very light. Very, very, very light pressure up here. Now, maybe the rest, who knows, a little bit more. Take it, blend it out, pull it out to the side. Not trying to really connect all of these, just trying to get these hard blue lines to go away, right? We don't need all that hard blue color in there. Just like that. All right, now we're gonna to switch to a bigger brush because I wanna cover more area a little bit more quickly. So we'll wash this brush. I'm gonna go right into the paint thinner. The paint thinner is about this high up the cup. So we're gonna go down into it, dipping it up, spinning off the excess. Then we're gonna set it down so we don't spill it, right? Flip it into a trash can, into the old beater bucket, and we just beat the devil out of it. All right, it's easier to do it if it's down on the floor. Remember guys on TikTok, tap, tap, tap the screen. Gotta be tapping the screen. And you can find me on YouTube at youtube.com slash paintwithjosh. I sell my paintings on Etsy, so paintwithjosh.etsy.com. You can find me on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, on all the platforms. But TikTok is my biggest audience, so I love you guys. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for being with me. And, uh, you know, you guys tag Netflix, tag PBS, tag Hulu, tag everybody. Maybe we can get me on TV, right? Now we're going to take a little bit of that phthalo blue. I'm going to come into here nice and soft with the black just a little bit, because we only have these three colors, phthalo blue, midnight black, titanium white. It's all we're gonna paint with today. So we're gonna mix the blue and the black together. And that way we'll get this very dark sky, right? We're gonna come up here, starting from the corner. So we, dot, we drop all that big dark color up there. And then look, as it goes down, it gets lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter, right? Don't trying to cover all of our little white areas either. Gotta keep it nice and bright so our clouds will stand out Ooh, look at that, the thing almost fell out. Just like that, getting the top, getting the sides. It only takes a few seconds to do the sides and your buyer will appreciate it. You could literally take it out of the box, hang it straight up on the wall. No worries, right? Don't have to frame it. 
Don't have to do anything crazy. Look, still with that dark color on the brush, we can come down here. Who knows, we'll just drop a little bit of it on here just to kind of clean the brush, get some of that dark color off there, right? Bam, just like that. We can do whatever we want to do now. Now we're going to come in, since we've come down here and got some of that white, that white paint, it's turned our brush a little bit of a lighter color. And in fact, I've got so much white all over my thumb, it's getting all over my brush. Let's see. All right, now we're going to come into that lightest area and just start crisscrossing, right? Just mixing it up the smallest bit, the littlest bit of blue in, the littlest bit of white out. All right, come over here into this guy. And try to stay out of your way and do it down here. So even though it got a little bit bluer, it's going to stay white. It's going to stay lighter color than the rest, right? Just crisscross strokes back and forth, back and forth. Just a little bit. All right, maybe we should have done two more. We could have had the Olympic rings. That would have been cool. Look, as we go over these lighter areas, they change color slightly, right? But it's not too much. It's not too noticeable that you're really going to notice it. You're not covering it all in blue. If you're covering all of that in blue, you have too much paint on your canvas, right? I've always talked about less paint, less is more. Let that paint work for you. Let it stretch. Let it rock and roll, right? And take these, really blend them out nicely. And all of a sudden, even without even painting any clouds, you can see there's clouds in there, right? There's a few, there's a few. Now we're gonna make that a little bit darker. And take a little bit more of our blue and black and come from this corner as well. Because I want it to be kind of dark up in my sky. Gotta have a dramatic sky. I love these drama-filled skies, right? Don't know what's happening. Very cool. Now look, you can go across the entire canvas, and because the the paint is has been spread out completely and blended to its max, you're not gonna stretch all that color everywhere, right? Just like that. Got a very cool sky. And that's gonna give us a uh, a guideline on where to put our clouds, right? We're going to use some of that white color or lighter color to kind of accentuate our white in our clouds and make that a little bit brighter, right? If you have tons of uh, paint covering over your canvas and you go to mix with your white clouds, it's immediately going to start to change and, and become whatever color you have, right? So I would say less is more. Less is more. Okay, we're going to switch brushes. Let's come over here to this big, gorgeous, beautiful fan brush by GAC Doctor, G-A-C-D-R. I don't know what else to call it. This is a size 14. You don't need one this big. I'm just using it because it's the cleanest, brightest brush, and I like to keep it nice and bright with our, our white clouds, right? We're not going to do any shadowing besides what's already on the canvas. So we're going to take our brush just like that, nice and white. Look at this gorgeousness, right? I love doing that on the TikTok. Just like that. Okay, we're going to come up here, and who knows, just kind of go around the edges of that, that wider area. Just kind of bounce them in. Maybe it went up there. Who knows? Who cares, right? It's not, there's no designated shape for a cloud. Just mix it up. And you can see how I've left area. I've left room, right? It's not, it's not white on top of white. I'm not trying to fill this all with white because as soon as we start to mix these up, guess what's going to happen? They're going to want to grow and touch each other, right? So we can come back. Let's, I don't know, let's grab a little bit more white. We're literally making it up as we go. That's how I like to paint. You kind of see where your canvas is telling you to go. Maybe there was a little bit more down in here, but maybe there was a far off guy kind of accentuating that little lighter colored area up there. It doesn't even have to connect, doesn't have to do anything. It's amazing. And look, we don't even have to use that. That's just a cool little piece, right? Maybe it came down around here. And look, it could connect. We're going to connect them. Bam. Have this whole big thing, but again, leaving room in between. And that way our clouds can kind of grow down. They can grow up. They can do whatever they want to do, right? Very cool. Just a mess, just like that. That's all it is. Every time we talk about making clouds, we talk about making a mess, right? So we're going to come in, we're going to take the brush, just like that, and come back, and we'll start on this side, maybe pushing it upwards, trying to stay out of your guys' way, so it's a little bit more difficult, right? I make it look harder than it is trying to stay out of your way. There we go, pull it down, mix it up. Oh my goodness, my goodness, woo, look at that. Fantastic, because we didn't cover all of that blue. Look at that. Just the neat little things you can do just by spinning it up, right? Still dry brush, doesn't have much paint on it. And then come back in, start to pull these guys downward now, right? We were kind of pushing those guys up and maybe letting them grow a little bit. Now this guy, maybe we can pull them up here, pull them down there, up and down and up and down and more pressure, less pressure. 
You want to blend this guy out a little bit more? Blend him. You want to be very light with these guys so you don't ruin the tip top that you really like, that cool little shape, right? Blend, blend, blend. This is how we do makeup, ladies. Come on. Blend it down. You don't want to have any real super hard areas or really thick areas, right? The more we blend over here, maybe we'll come up here and push on that guy a little bit. Or we'll come up here and maybe make these guys a little bit softer, but I really like that for some reason. I like it a lot. So I'm going to try to keep that, right? Bam. Come in anywhere you don't like. You can soften. I like that there's a little bit of blue back behind there. It's almost like a, a little tunnel in the clouds. It's very, very cool. And again, yours, it doesn't have to look like this, right? It's not going to look exactly like this. I know it's not because you didn't grab the same exact amount of white. You didn't blend it the exact same amount I did, which is fine. I'm giving you an idea, showing you how to do it. And then you're going to go back and three or four times and you're going to come back and tell me, my goodness, you should see my clouds nowadays. They look fantastic. All right, let's do this. We're going to take our big old two inch brush. And this is a big brush, ladies. Come on, two inches is big. We're going to come in here from the bottom to the top. We're going to slide it up just like that and go to the side. Look, we haven't, we're not using a whole lot of pressure. And since we blended those clouds out, we're not picking up a whole lot of paint on the brush either, right? Very cool. Remember guys, tap that screen on TikTok. Tap the screen, baby. It helps TikTok tell people that uh, Paint With Josh is kind of cool, right? Paint With Josh has 4.3 million views on TikTok. Can you believe it? I tried, I typed in my own hashtag the other day. I was like, oh my. That's a lot of views, baby. That's a lot of views. Come on, PBS, put me on TV. Let's do something, baby. Let's get the world back into painting. It's gonna be amazing. It's gonna be a rebirth of painting. Bam, just like that. Okay, now we gotta come in and make up a big old giant mountain because I love painting mountains. Who else wants a mountain? You guys on TikTok, you wanna see a mountain? You wanna see how we make a mountain out of just three colors? Blue, whoop, where are we at? Blue, black, and white, right? Show you how to make something cool. <clears throat> now, since we're only gonna use these three colors, we have to decide on the, on like the brightness or the, the darkness of it, right? So instead of just using the blue and black, I'm gonna mix a little bit of the white in as well. And as we mix that up together, that is gonna make this nice kind of grayish color. And then when we put that back against here, it's going to become even lighter as it mixes in with all that white paint that's still on the canvas, right? It's constantly blending that white paint. It's fantastic. Okay, now we can come in, maybe we'll take a little bit more of the blue and black over here. We're gonna scrape up just a little bit of that and we're gonna make a second pile, our darker pile. All right, so it's going to be lighter than the black, but it's going to be darker than this shadow. And then we can have two little mountains back in there. Cool little thing. If you do both of your mountains with the same color, they're not gonna stand out apart from each other. So we're gonna come in, we're gonna scrape up the smallest little bit, just like that, it's fantastic. We're gonna come back in here, maybe way off in the distance. And this little mountain, he's so far away, there's not a whole lot of detail on this guy. Doesn't need to be super big. Doesn't need to be a perfect triangle or anything like that. You do whatever you want. Make yours look however it wants to look. Come back with the brush, just like this, and come in, start to slide it out. And see how easily it slides with that liquid white underneath, that blending medium? It helps pull it, it helps let it blend. Look at that stuff back there, it's fantastic. The different ways that we pull our brush with different color or different amount, you can start to build a mountain. What does your mountain look like? All right? does it need a little bit more of that dark color, that gray color right in here to make our ridge look a little bit more 3D? Does yours? Mine did. All depends, right? What do you want it to look like? Again, we're going from dark all the way down to light, and then you can hit it with dark again, a little bit of tree in the front or something, and it'll help give us that distance, right? So we'll come back with our two inch brush, just like this. It's hard to do on the, with one hand, all right? Come in here and start tapping, grabbing the base of the mountain just a little bit, pulling it down at the same angle that you want your mountain to look like it's living right so maybe on this guy pull it down kind of like a clock so from every direction pulling it down that way this guy back here and look every time we come down and grab some of this white paint it comes up and mixes with that darker paint and that's going to create that foggy misty look somebody said the other day how do you paint you know fog well it sort of happens on its own as you do this stuff right trust the process follow the process all right, let's make a little bit of blue shadowy color. So we'll take our blue. Ooh, that was a lot of white. But I guess we need a lot because blue is very powerful and it wants to turn the white super blue super fast. There we go. And grab up a little bit more 
don't really want to mix it in. Scrape a tiny little bit of that dark color in there just to dull it the smallest bit so it's a little grayish, bluish. And again, we might have grabbed too much white. There we go. Just leave it all mixed up marbled like that. That's what you want anyway. You want it to be different. So, depending on where our light source is going to be, let's say that all of our shadows are going to be on the right-hand side, and we'll highlight the left-hand side. So, take this blue color, right? Grab a little bit of it up on our knives. Come back up here, maybe half of this peak. Just let it slide off. Very gently, very close to the edge of the, the canvas. You don't need it to be, you don't want to come at it straight like this, right? Then you're going to scrape. You don't want to scrape. You want to deposit. You want to take the roll that's there, hover over the canvas, and very lightly drop that roll without touching your knife. If you touch your knife on the canvas, you either have too little, or it's not going to break as much, or you're out of paint and you need to go back and get some more, right? Put some of that down there even. Take this whole ridge. Very cool. Okay, we'll come back. We're going to grab some of our white. We're going to mix it up with a little bit of that blue color because then it's going to be very white, but it's not going to be pure white. The closer we get, the more pure white we need to be. So we're going to make this off-white, a little bit gray back here. Come back, grab up the top of our mountain, start sliding it down, leaving little differences, leaving a room for a little bit of shadow back in there, right? A little bit of a valley, a little peak here, a little, little bit there. Don't cover all the shadows. You cover all the shadows and you've lost all your depth. That's a bad thing, right? Just letting it fall off however it wants. Gripping, grabbing, changing, moving. Maybe this side. There we go. Got a little bit more into the light. Who knows? A little bit of a light on the peak there. All depends on what you want it to look like, right? Very soft little things. Don't cover up all the dark areas. And all of a sudden, you got a cool little mountain back there. Take some of this light color very lightly. Kind of drag it across. Mix it in so it's not a perfect thing. Come back again with that two-inch brush just like that. And go into the base of those shadowy areas and just tap them. They want to disappear fast, so don't get all of them. If you get all of them, you're going to have to start over. All right, now we're going to turn the brush this way. See how we rotated? Now we're going to come over here, start pulling it out this way, right? That's all we're doing, just in a, a little confined space. Tap, 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 then up again, like an old typewriter. Ding, 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 right? Now you can take the base, very lightly stir. Just stir it up, mix it up, baby, mix it up. And then all of a sudden you can't tell where the bottom of that mountain is. Maybe this is a whole nother cloud coming in from our, our sky to be in front of the mountain, right? It's very cool, very cool. Remember guys, tap that screen, <clears throat> tap the screen. I'm not looking at it, but I've got mods in there that are looking and uh, I love answering your questions. We're going live tomorrow at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern. And uh, I think it's like five o'clock in the UK. So. Wherever you are, based off those time zones, I hope to see you there. All right, let's get another little fan brush. I'm talking about a little fan brush. This is a size eight. It's small to me because I use very large tools, right? Now let's come in, maybe grab the, a little bit of that darker pile. Just on the edge of the, of the brush. Don't need to fill up the whole bristle. Just the whole, just a little bit at the top. Because we only want to do a little bit of forest. Maybe that was split up in between here, right? So maybe we'll come down. Just like that, just popping in little bits, little things, little trees, different heights, right? All over the place, different heights. You don't want to have them all be the same height. Okay, just like that. Now we're going to take that two inch brush, just like this. <laughs> Looks better when we do it upside down, right? Like that. I'm going to come back in, and then we're going to come in and just tap. Tap, tap, tap. Pulling it straight down though, right? These trees are growing straight up and down. So we're pulling them straight up and down, and we're not... We're not over mixing. We're not covering all that stuff. I don't want to cover all those. I don't want to ruin all those cool little openings and different little things. Those things look really neat. Just like that. We got a little bit of forest in there. <clears throat> Take our two inch brush again. Same brush. Haven't washed it. Going to come back very lightly. Swipe up. Right? Not with a whole huge amount, but just a little bit of pressure. It gives the tip tops of them a very sharp little point. They're very cool. All right. Now let's come back in. And we're going to grab up more of our little mountain color, that darker color that we had. We'll be okay because this color has now mixed in with that white, so it's going to show up a little bit darker, right? I'm going to grab that whole big amount on the knife. We're going to come straight up in here. We're going to turn it. We're going to go, ah, where's it going? Not too high. Oh, my. All right, let's go up here. Very cool. Just smooshing it on right now. 
dumping it on. All we're really worried about is what the top line looks like. All right, so if there's a little imperfection in your top line, make sure it's nice and straight, right? That way it's, you got a nice peak to the top. There's not a lot of fuzz up there. Let's scrape up this little bit, come down in here. Maybe we had a little bit, who knows, maybe it came down right underneath all those trees, just like that. So cool. And we don't even have to go all the way, right? Very neat. Just dumping on a little bit of extra color because what happens is it's going to blend and have a cool little effect when you do that. All right, so we come up here, take this guy, and we really start to just decide where we want our horizon to live. All right, way back there. Watch this. You can even grab the paint, come up, change the shape of your mountain just with your brush. Push it off in the distance. Who knows? What's going on back there, right? Very cool. Pop little things out. Maybe we'll come onto this side. And just very lightly. I like to pull a little bit higher and straighter than you think it needs to be. And then we'll come down. Maybe we'll come this way. Come down. Very cool. All right, the more and more you play with it, the cooler little things happen. And all we're doing is just dumping color until I think it looks right. And then there's your mountain right there. Very neat. Very neat little thing. So again, we're gonna come back to our, our blue shadowy color, all right? Need to make up a little bit more, make it a little bit darker because it's a little closer. It's gonna be a little darker in my mind, further away from the light, closer to us, right? So we'll grab up that blue and on the back side of it, so maybe here, and just let it flow down. Just like that. Maybe there's a whole little shadowy ridge back there. All these little different things. Maybe it came in here. Maybe it flowed along the edge. What does yours look like? Because it doesn't have to look just like mine, right? We say that all the time. Now let's go back to that little bit darker color that we had made up. Throw in a little darker, deeper, darker shadows kind of down around the bottom. Let them blend in. So you got a little bit, you got your shadow, then you got a little bit deeper, darker shadow, and then into our mountain. Very cool. Different little things, right? Maybe some of these areas are just so shadowy, we can't see them. Or they're too rocky to be covered with snow. There's all sorts of stuff can happen, right? Now we're going to come back into our white, go back over to this little pile. And now that we've added white, it's going to be even brighter than before, but still not pure white. All right? Scrape off all the paint off the knife. I think, well, sort of clean. I'm going to come back in, grab up a fair amount, come into here, and then just rotate. Let it fall down, just like that. Very cool. You can get all these broken little bits of snow. Neat little things happen if you just let the paint fall off of the knife on its own. Very cool little things. And we don't want it to go too far. All right, maybe drag a little bit of that lighter color back into the shadows just slightly. Just a little bit. What do you want yours to look like, right? Just a little touch. I never like it to be such a straight line. You know what I mean? It's not a perfectly angled straight thing happening over here, so I try not to make it like that. Let's see. Get any amount of white we can get to come off. There we go. Gorgeous. Look at all that shadow back there. It's fantastic. Again, it doesn't all have to be the same color. Your brain wants you to make it all white because it's snowy outside, right? Again, very slight differences. A little bit deeper, darker, richer color because it's a little closer to us. That's how I see it anyway. Very lightly, same thing we did with our trees, going up very lightly. We're going up in the direction, and now I'm going to flip the brush over to the other side that doesn't have that dark paint on it, just in case. Very light, the same angles, and you see how it just softens it a little bit, makes it a little bit more blurry. Makes you wonder what's going on back there. It's a little bit mysterious, what's happening back there, right? All this stuff down underneath, watch this, we can take it, start to tap it out. Let it mix in with all the color, all that white. And then you can change where your mountain sits, how high it was, how tall it was, what it looked like. Stick something in front of it, add some more trees, do whatever you want. All right, come back over here. And all of a sudden, we have another little floating mountain. We're going to mix all that up. Mixes it in. All right, watch this. Now we might not be able to tell where, where the trees and the mountain went, right? Just like that. Very softly mixing. Very cool. I love that sky. It's a gorgeous sky. Okay, let's do a few more little things. Maybe I want to have some water in here. Maybe we do. Do we have room for water is the question. 
or should we skip it? Should we skip it? I wanted to have a little bit of water, but we may not have the space. Let's grab a little bit of blue, grab a little bit of black, and I don't want to force it, right? So when you force it, then you're just not going to like what you come up with. Never like to force it. So through the blue, through the black, that way it's a different color than it is back there, all on the brush at the same time. And then we're going to come in and decide, I don't know, maybe there was a little closer little forest back in here. See how we come down into that little bit of fog and we pop up, but we're leaving that little bit of distance back there. Very cool. You can go as far as you want. You can go as high as you want. But the higher you go up into these bits of our, our, our mountain snow, the harder and more difficult it's going to be to get your paint to stick on there, right? It's going to be hard, I'm telling you. Very cool. I like that. Right, come down here and just bring them straight down. The, the, the two inch brush is going to do a lot of the tapping and blending for us, which is why I don't finish a lot of the, the forest bottom. You know what I mean? We don't really need it. Let's get a little bit more paint. <clears throat> a little bit more of that blue and black mixture and say we come up here. I like this. We're going to come up like this. And again, you don't have to go all the way to the side of your canvas when you're doing your forests. I try not to sometimes. Because if you want to have anything in your foreground, you can't, you have to leave some space. You can't just layer on layer on layer on layer, right? Got to have a little bit of room. A little bit of room in there. Make these guys a little sharper. There we go. I like the way these look. Very cool. Don't have too much fog, though, back in there. When you have too much fog, it doesn't, you think it's going to look all right, but it doesn't look as, as, as good. So we're going to swipe up from the bottom. Just want to leave that little area of fog. Look at it, it's like a, a, an eighth of an inch, maybe. All right? Throw our trees in, just very lightly swipe up, and all of a sudden our mountain is hidden behind a little forest again. And we're going to come in here, and we're going to tap. And we're going to tap, 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 tap. Just pulling straight down. You know what I mean? Tapping, going down. Moving over, tapping, going down. Moving over, tapping, going down. Moving over, tapping, going down. Just like that. Bringing it down. Changing the height. We don't want it to be a straight you know, all the way across. So maybe we come down, then we come up, and we come down a little bit, leaving some of those details, and then we pop back up again. So it's not all the same. I hate when they're all the same. All the noise, 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 when they're all the same. Oh my goodness. Don't like it. There we go. Just like that. Very cool. Misty little forest, right? And again, we mix up the bottom. You decide where you want the bottom to be. Maybe it's up there, maybe it's down here, maybe it's over here, or we jump down or we come up and just like that, we've got a whole nother little layer that we can start to work in. Very cool, very cool. All right, let's take this side. Since I always talk about finishing the edges, why don't we tap in one little tree over there, do our little misty taps and our swipe up, same as we always do. What is that? It's like a little piece of something. There we go, a little flick. There we go. Just mix it up. That's all you need. And then we can take and put whatever we want back there. Pull a little bit of your snow over the top of it. Just like that. Fixes it. Put a big old monster tree in here. We could do a, a, a cabin off in the distance. We could do a fence. We could do a path coming out of the forest. Like it's just, just coming out. We could do whatever we want. And if you don't like that, just blend it away. Watch this. Like literally gone. Can't tell me where it was. It is not there anymore. That's the best part about oil paints is what you can do and how you can go back, right? So why don't we come in with this nice little brush. I'm gonna mix up a little bit of pile onto the knife, uh, with the knife here so we don't have to keep going back to, the, ooh, I almost grabbed the crimson. Don't do that, Josh, we're just blue and black today. Just blue and black, that's it. And you can tell we haven't even touched it because I haven't even pulled anything out yet. All right, I wanna get a fair enough amount of the paint. Blue, black, get it all in there. Mix it up. Get it onto our little size eight fan brush. I call it a little one. It might be big to you, but to me, it's not that big. Not that big. Not when I was using a 14 to make these other guys, right? And we'll come over here. Maybe there was something, I don't know. I, I almost want to put it, you know, I don't want to make it dead center in the peak of the mountain. That's not what you want to do. Almost looks like there's a little gate leading out into the forest. Maybe we stick it right on top of that guy. Come down like that. Just a little bit and we're going to come from the edge very lightly tapping up just with the edge of the brush just the corner right leaving little dabs and this is not our completed tree shape right but we dab up 
And the more that we pop out to the side, the more they start looking like branches. Maybe we flip the brush over and start coming in here and pop it out this way, pop it out that way. Give it more little branches out to the side. Where do you want it to stop is the question, right? And just because we're going down doesn't mean it needs to keep getting wider and wider and wider and wider and then eventually falling off. That's not what we want it to do. But very simply, very easily, just to the side, popping in a little happy little tree back there. You can take the edge of your knife right in the center of your trunk and just go up and down a few times. Give yourself a cool, sharp little peak up there. Very easily done. All right, now we're gonna get this Bob Ross liquid white. This stuff right here, I really hope the lid doesn't fall off as I'm holding it like that, right? Bob Ross liquid white. This is what we prepped our canvas with. And that's what's gonna help all of our highlight color stick, right? If I just took the white, watch, I'm gonna show you. I take the white, just straight titanium white, and we're gonna go put it up here on our tree, right? It doesn't really stick. It's gonna start to immediately turn black. You see how our, our white is immediately changing? So you need that liquid white, the very liquid wet. It's very wet. If you tipped over the jar, you will be sorry. If one of these, you see what I mean? This stuff doesn't move. But if you tipped over a jar of liquid white, you are really going to be hurting, let me tell you. I'm going to grab a little bit of our blue, bring it over here, just so again, it's not pure white. We are mixing it with the titanium white, but we're also mixing in our liquid white because that's going to help it stick, right? Not having a whole lot on the brush is vital as well. You don't want your entire brush filled with paint. Just a little bit, and then we're going to come in, start touching, and it comes off so easily since we're touching it, right? Just dabbing at it, just little bits, soft little things. We pop out and we come out here. Or we come out there, I'm trying to make it so you guys can see it. Just like that. Don't have to cover the whole thing. You wanna leave a lot of the darkness in there. Gotta leave that darkness, right? Maybe we take the bottom, if all of our shadows are going this way, we just pull it out to the side. Take them over here. I never like, this one looks so good. I don't wanna ruin a whole lot of it, but I do need a little bit of color. There we go. I'm gonna pull them out and all of a sudden we've got a little hill right in the center. Fantastic, I like that, that's very cool. Right, and say we even took some of that darker paint and we imagine maybe our hill went down or something started to go off into the mist over here. And then you can decide what do you want? Do you wanna leave it like that? Do you wanna have a little fence? What do you wanna have, you know, what do you wanna have? What, do you, what does yours look like? That's what I always ask you, what does yours look like? It doesn't matter what mine looks like. It's about what yours looks like. Now let's wash that brush off. So we have a nice clean brush again, and then our shape won't be kind of determined by how much is already smushed onto that brush, right? There we go. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Needs a little bit more of that darker shadow in there. Fantastic. All right, and then with the smallest little touch, Add a few little branches, you fix that whole area. And we'll flip it over and use this side. Boom, always changing, but not covering all the dark spots. You have to leave some dark. Okay, we're gonna come back. I'm gonna grab up that dark paint, just wiggling the brush through so it kind of splits the bristles and starts to fill them with that paint. See what I mean? They go through like that. You wiggle it, wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Right? So again, it's not all the way up the brush. I don't need it all the way up the brush. We're not gonna be making a, a big giant tree. Just a, maybe another guy, maybe a little bit taller than this guy. All right, so we'll come over here a little bit taller up. Maybe we'll pop him just over here. All right, very light, just a guide. That little line is just a guide about where to go. All right, we'll come over here just very lightly, start tapping up. And the more and more you push, the more the, uh, the brush is gonna spread out, starting to create that shape. Let's go back and get some more paint. Some more paint on the brush, nice and goopy. And we're gonna come in and try to show you guys. We'll start popping out this way. All right, come down. Only doing about half the tree, trying to show you how to do it, right? The other side, you might not be able to see. It's hidden behind the old hand, the old glove. I right, don't want it to come out too much. And now as we're down here, I'm pushing more into the thing. I'm almost pushing the whole brush against it. You see that? And that's leaving more paint up here, right? So again, we're out of paint. Let's go back. I'm 
mix that blue, mix that black together so it's back onto our brush. And now we're gonna leave more little textury bits, right? Now this tree has to sit below our other tree. There we go. Cool little things, like to stick out. I love these ones that stick out randomly, bam. Fun little bit of a, a little happy tree, right? It's, it's a little too light up there. Not as dark as I want, because it started to mix with that light color. So I'm just gonna go back in, adding a few more little bits of our black textury thick paint. That's gonna fill in our little shadows and really start to make it look like a depth filled tree. Very cool. Very neat. Now we're gonna go back and highlight. They're gonna look just like that guy. So let's wash off this brush. I don't think we're gonna be needing it very much longer. Now what we should do is grab a little of our white and blue mixture that we have right here. And when I say a little, I mean a lot, right? Do what I say, uh, do what I do, not as I say, or vice versa. We're gonna start to pull this guy, right? Leaving some of that shadow though. I don't wanna cover over that shadowy area. I'm gonna pull him down here, kind of close to this guy. Right? We're leaving that darkness underneath. Now, since I have too much paint on that brush, I'm gonna switch to a dry brush and then I can make it soft. Soften it down until just that right amount of shadow is showing, right? Very cool. Very neat, very bright white against that darker color, right? You get that cool little effect. Now let's come back with our one inch brush, right? It's got all that, this one still has all that white paint on it. So maybe we'll switch to a different one inch brush. Okay, we'll grab the bottom of this guy and just start to pull him at a different angle, right? So then we know that he's sitting on a different plane of land. There we go. And the more you pull it, could look like a little bit of a shadow. <clears throat> a shadow. It could look like a different little bank in the snow. There'd be a whole lot of different things going on around here, right? All right. Now, since we have that white paint down here anyway, we might as well just uh, finish our guy over here, doing the same thing, kind of leaving that little room because it's gonna wanna grow. Come back with our two inch brush, just like this, very softly, until it drags over enough where you think it looks like a shadow, All right? Maybe we pull this guy over a little bit more and just blend it in. Maybe they're on the same line, the same path. Again, until you think it looks right. If it needs a little bit darker paint, maybe come up and dab some out of here and add a little bit more just by dabbing it and then bringing it down into the snow, right? Maybe it needs a little bit more over here, just based off of the, the direction of that shadow. It needs a fair amount more, Josh. All right, we'll just bring our guy up here. Drag our shadow down. Very cool. Mixing him in over here, and then we can come back with our snow and pull it back the other direction, right? Come back with that snow, still haven't washed the white brush, got a lot of white on it. And come back in here. Now start to shape our little shadow until we want to, you know, I might have just covered up too much of it, but it's okay. There we go. Maybe we can just dab, look at that, we'll just dab it in. We can just dab it in. Dab it in, little swipe, little here, little there, back and forth. Looks like a shadow to me. I like it. It's almost the direction that I don't like. It needs to go more this way, right? That darkness, there we go. That matches more with that shadow over there. And then we can come back with that light snowy brush and without even adding any more, just kind of putting a little bit more pressure, right? We can send that shadow back just like the other one. Just like that. I like it. That's pretty cool. Okay. Now let's wash the dark off of this brush because we need a nice clean utensil. So we're going to go into the thinner or the low odor mineral spirits into the bucket comes out nice and clean. Now we'll go back into that liquid white. Right, not a whole lot. I'm gonna come in, start to mix it with that whiter color. Maybe snag a touch of that blue, just so again, so it's not pure white. Pure white is never my favorite, right? So we're gonna come in with this brush, nice and white, and come back again, tap the top, come in and just start dropping on little dabs. We don't have to cover everything, right? Don't have to cover it all. A little bit of white out on the edge of our bits that stick out, just like that. Start to bring it to life. Coming in over here, 
a right? little bit darker on that side. It doesn't have to show every single thing. All right, the more we're coming down, the more we're pushing in. Now I'm rotating the brush over. It's gonna be very bright the first time you do that. So be careful, I'm not trying to get every single thing. And I do wanna get a little bit of brightness. There we go. Then we can go back and work at it until we like the way that it looks, but it's nice and it's sitting nice on there. Not trying to make perfect straight lines or anything like that either. Just nice and simply, got a cool little painting. Very neat, very easy. Two little trees, we maybe need to add one more, right? Everyone needs a friend, these little guys out here. Who knows, who knows? Let's do, maybe we'll do, we could do a little sticky tree from back there. We could do all sorts of stuff, right? Let's do that. Oh, I like that idea. I like that idea. Okay, let's grab a little bit of this. Only because like right here, I can't go back and fix that now. And I know you guys are like, oh, it looks great. But no, nah, to me, I'm gonna need, to, gonna need to do something to it. So why don't we come just very lightly and then we'll push a little bit harder as we go down. We'll make one of those crazy looking trees like we did the other day. Just like that, very cool. <clears throat> now we're gonna take this guy, make sure he has enough trunk and then we'll kind of pull out his little shadow as well. Fix the bottom while we have the chance. Just a little bit of difference in there. Bam, just like that, pretty cool. Okay, let's take our liner brush. We're gonna go into our mineral spirits, into that dark pile of paint that we've been using, right? We only have two colors. So it's black and blue in this dark pile of paint. And that mineral spirits makes it very, very wet, even wetter than the liquid white. And that allows it to come off of our brush so easily. So we're gonna come in here and just start making little branches, right? The more mineral spirits you have in the paint, the easier it's gonna flow over all of the little stuff back there, little things. Don't try to go over your mountain too much. If you try to go into that thick paint of your mountain and all that snow, it's gonna become difficult. See how we came up into the blue and all of a sudden our tree branch immediately started to mix with that paint. So then you have to go back over it and try to trace it with a very light touch and more paint thinner making it longer, right? So be careful. Maybe this guy, we're gonna need more paint on the brush for this guy. All right, maybe he comes in straight up like that. Got a little branch off to the side too. Who knows? Crazy old little tree back in here. There we go. Now it all makes sense. It's thick enough to hold itself. Come out, just be wiggly. Someone said, oh, I can't do it because my hand jiggles. I was like, oh, what I wouldn't give. I have a nice little wiggly hand. Be very cool. Let's go back and get some more paint thinner. Because then you have it just naturally, right? More uh, mineral spirits back into that thick paint. If you try to do it with thick paint, man, you would be upset right now. Because you'd be like, Josh, this doesn't work. It doesn't move. Nothing happens. Well, yeah, you have to have the thinner. You got to have what I say. You got to listen, guys. Maybe a little branch out the side of that. I love the little guys off the bottom. All right, maybe in here we come in. Oh, he's very skinny. Just like that. Come out. Come up. As far as you want to go. Right? All depends. All I'm doing is taking the attention off of the little bit of trees back there. And now bringing your attention to this big tree and all these little branches right in the front. Right? Every time you have a little bump, that's another little chance to throw off a branch. Very cool. Right, and this guy... Might be need to be a little bit thicker now to hold up the weight of all this wood, right? That's my biggest fear, like painting something and then looking at it and going, that doesn't make sense. This little piece of wood's not going to hold up that whole giant branch. Get out of here. Very cool. All right, if I try to go over my mountain, I really need to have a lot of thinner, very light touch to get it to drag across there. It wants to be a pain in the butt. All right, and the bigger and thicker it is, the more you have to extend and thicken your trunk. It's holding it up. There we go. Trying to stay away from that thick part of that mountain back there. Now, you don't have to add all these little branches. It's not necessary. Yours might have been gorgeous right off the bat. You didn't even have to add anything different. But for me... I love having a little bit of craziness in the painting, right? Fantastic, I really like that.
Let's get a little bit more of our odorless mineral spirits because we just are burning through it. All right. It goes fast and you don't want to force it and not have enough. That's for sure. If you don't have enough, you're going to be in Agony City, like Bob used to say all the time. Agony City. And I've been there. It's no fun. There we go. Little teeny tiny things. Little teeny tiny amounts of pressure. Oh, that's all you need. Damn, I like that. Okay. Let's go. I almost dipped my brush into my drink cup, guys. That would have been bad. That would have been bad. A little Dr. Pepper for the evening. Mm. A little watered down by now, but that's all right. All right. Now we're going to come into our final bit of highlighting on the tree here, right? Don't have to highlight every single thing. I want to take a little teeny bit of that white because you can always come back for more, right? Come out onto the edge. Just touch. Whatever comes off, it's going to come off. And the more you tap at it, the more it's going to start looking like frozen little barks. We'll come back in, tap the knife again, maybe on the edge of this guy or on the side of this guy or a little bit over here. Just little teeny tiny things. All we're looking for is the smallest little bit of white on there for our eyeballs. That's all they want to see. Little taps, right? If we tap and then we kind of tap next to itself, it'll kind of look more like a tree. More like bark to me anyway. I don't know about to you guys. And again, all of my little lines are on the left side of the tree, leaving the right side in the shadow. That's our shadowy side. We can't have him be all crazy and highlight, uh, highlight and bright when he's supposed to be the dark side. Let's take a little bit of our white on our knife. Just come out here and just so lightly tap. Maybe we'll swipe at it. Get this little bit of bunched up snow right on the edge come in here just very lightly again if it if you touch in some place and it's it comes off and it doesn't in other places don't force it do not force it right if it wants to be somewhere it will be somewhere if you force it you're only gonna make yourself mad right let's come over here grab a little bit more tap that side tap over here rotating our knife it's never just a perfectly straight thing right only touching half of the branch though the left half and that way it's it's providing a little bit of shadow we've got our little bit out here there we go see again even i try to force it sometimes and i know better uh you know better josh don't force that baby there we go not every branch has to be high lit and snow either but maybe some of these bigger guys that were down here I'm going to rotate up, boom. Maybe they caught a little, just a little bit. Or you can use a small side of your knife, right? doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be the big side every time. Sometimes the big side is hurtful and it can, can, uh, can ruin a, one of my paintings anyway. Okay, a little bit of white up here, just on the tip top. Just caught a little bit, maybe in the little V of this guy right there. That's almost too much, so we're going to try to scrape that guy off. Just like that. Bam, bam, bam. Right? Don't have to overdo it. Don't have to get crazy. Just want to see a little bit of light color on the edge of some of the branches. That's all we need. Damn. Very cool. Very cool. All right. Back in here. Again, you don't have to do all of them. You don't have to do all your branches. But I'm trying to sell my paintings, so I want them to be gorgeous, right? And a lot of people try to pick on me now that we've got a little bit of a following and uh, and try to tell, oh, you forgot this one or you didn't highlight that one. Or, you forgot this branch, blah, blah, blah. So we're going to spend a little time here. So uh, if you want to scroll through this part of the, of the tutorial, I fully understand. I'll only be here for a minute. And for the people watching live on TikTok, you guys are stuck with me anyway. So there we go. A little bit of white. Man, that's looking cool, but don't cover up all that dark. Don't do it. You're going to be mad at yourself if you cover up all that darkness, right? The small edge of the knife, maybe letting it drag down, maybe pushing if it deposits, right? Dumps a little bit here, there, everywhere. Maybe switch to the long side of the knife. Come out there. Caught a little bit of snow in the on the inside. Very cool. Very cool. All right, now let's come over here. 
we're going to grab for our birds. Let's go back into the mineral spirits. Going to go back into our, our very liquidy ink-like paint. All right, going to fill up our bristles, and then we're going to spin and pull out. That way you have a nice sharp tip to the end of your bristles. Now, look at how sharp that is. See if we can get it in focus. There we go. I modify these brushes so they become very, very, very sharp. Why don't we come in here with the with the old family and we'll pop them in back here. And if you guys are this is the first time you're watching a Paint With Josh video, you're like, what do you mean the old family? So these birds, I didn't come up with the shape of the birds, but I came up with this orientation and referring to them as my family. So that's myself, my wife, and my daughter. And they go into every single painting as part of the signature. That's how you know you've got a Paint With Josh original. If you've got those birds in it somewhere, there's only like, I don't know, maybe three paintings in my in existence that don't have those birds because I forgot to add them or I was doing something or the video came out so well and I just forgot to, to finish. So yeah, those birds, they're a little famous. That's the Paint With Josh family. And uh, yeah, I encourage you guys to add birds to your paintings. It's very cool to be represented in a painting and uh, your family and friends are gonna love it. Trust me, I'm telling you tell you the truth. So we're going to come back. And since we have all this white down around the bottom, let's go back into that dark color. Even though I just cleaned off the little silly brush and loaded up with paint again. And let's decide, I don't know, we'll put it down here today. Put the old Josh Hancock down here. Damn. I never like signing it so super close to the bottom because when I go to crop the image, sometimes the signature gets lost. So just like that. That's how you know you got a JK original, guys. We can even sign the back for the people on TikTok. But before we do that, turned out fantastic. You obviously think so. That's why you want to click on. Oh, that was going so good. Well, I almost forgot what camera I was looking at. Here we go. All right. Guess who? You blew it. Hey, guys. Welcome back to Paint With Josh. It's cold, freezing January painting. Uh, man. Hi, guys. Why, is it, why do I say guys? It's not guys. It's probably just one, probably just either one guy, one woman sitting there watching, not guys. Come on, Josh, not guys. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Hi, <laughs> I almost said guys again. <sighs> here we go, all right, let's do it. Hi there, well, hi there. Hi, hey you, how's it going you? Thanks for tuning in, you. Hi guys. Uh, hi, welcome. <laughs> the painting is the easy part. This is the difficult part, here we go. So check the description down below. Make sure you get your canvas nice and wet. Ah! Hey guys! Right? Oh, I almost fell. Almost fell. Here we go. Hi, welcome. Why am I standing like I'm like I'm slouching? What is this? Who stands like this? Boom! One take. Okay, it wasn't one take. It wasn't one take, but it was. It was. Uh, it was enough. <laughs> 